Welcome back everybody. It's early November. Uh, hip waiter weather. Just a little too cold for the wetsuit this morning. I seem to have found something even though the bottom of the river is covered with a green algae or something like that. Very hard to see. Where there's current it's a little clearer. And here's something made out of glass. Uh, nothing to write home about This has some design on it, but it looks broken yeah, That's a bicycle seat from probably the 1970s Another victim of the quicksand I always talk about Well, tires always collect things, and this is the kind of stuff that I'm looking for. This is an old cork top med. It could have even been embossed, and I'm looking for a seam on this thing. The seam's here, but it doesn't go all the way up to the, the top. So this is sometime in the 1800s is the likelihood. Let's try to find something whole. Here's a small pottery fragment, sometimes we could pick information off of this looks like it has maybe palm trees and it was probably a teacup blue highlights on the inside and out this one looks like it could be something an old beer or an old soda let's see That's a screw top vinegar from probably the 1920s. Another victim of the quicksand. I don't know why you'd be wearing shoes like that, but well, maybe they were for in the garbage a long time ago. Who knows? Well, what I believe this to be is a very old eraser. And I remember when I was in elementary school, I would take my pink pet erasers and draw them, make them look like cars. This looks like an eraser that might have been carved and it has axles and wheels through it on the front and back. So some kid probably made that a long time ago. Okay, now we got something that looks like an old beer or an old soda. That's a slick. Ah, here's a mason jar at least. Let's see if it's whole. Atlas, strong shoulder mason. Have to check the date out on that. I don't see any cracks. Well, as of right now, that's the best find. Let's keep looking. Okay, some kind of pottery fragment. Let's snag this with the rake. Okay. That's interesting. Doesn't look terribly old. Maybe 50s, but I'm just guessing. Here's a plate. Is it whole? Let's find out. The answer is no. Couple bottles here. Let me try to hook them. I think I got that one. Yeah, we got that. Let's have a look. This is another 
unembossed slick beer or soda. Let's check out the other one. Got it hooked. Looks like it's going to be a big guy. Soda. That is. Big guy. Okay. The question is, are there any chips in it? There are no apparent chips. These are from, if memory serves me, 1924. So that's about a hundred year old soda bottle. Pretty good find. Well, here's a marble. I usually find a lot of these due to where I was at in the river. Uh, there weren't many there, but on the way back, uh, here one is. So how do marbles get in the Cuyahoga River? Well, one, Akron, which is close to here, was the marble capital of the world during the golden age of marbles. Two, before trash collection, everyone just dumped their garbage in the river. That's why it caught on fire in, the, I guess, the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, and a lot of marbles were thrown out in the trash. And three, if you were a kid back then, nothing would be more pleasing than to shoot a marble with your slingshot and watch it splash in the river or skip across the river. So there are three possible reasons why there are so many marbles in this river. So let's pop this out of here. Is it whole? Yes it is, nothing special. Looks like a green cat eye. But we'll put this in the jar on the cleanup. This one looks really good. Let's have a look. Yeah. Oh, all right, there it is. There we go. Okay. What is that? It's like blue. Got some chips in it. Nice swirling going on. Uh, marble number two. Didn't think I was going to get any of these today. A small porcelain hand reaching up at me. Looks like another green cat eye. And that's what we have. Another victim of the quicksand. Well, there's some kind of plate down here. Or a hubcap. What is this? That's going to be a hubcap. Let's see what kind of automobile this was. Bring it over into the shallow. Okay. Well, the world may never know. Well, I may finally be able to prove what I found the other day. Well, actually a while ago was a trombone or was it something else this looks like to be the other part of whatever that item was so I'm going to dig this thing out here and I'll get right back to you well the mystery is solved if this is the other part of that item and it had that instrument bell on it then I think it could only be one thing, some kind of a horn without trumpet components, without trombone components. I think it was a horn. Uh, we'll match the two together on the cleanup and see if that's what's going on here. Well, I think my day will be complete if this is a dairy. Let's have a look. Okay, who is it? It is, oh, it's one of these. I have one of these, but it has some, has some scratches on it. It says 400 on it embossed. Probably from the 30s or 20s. Cleanup time once again, and it's like we took a trip back to the 1920s. Didn't do too bad considering that all I had was hip waders. Uh, always better to have a snorkel mask and wetsuit. So where do we start? Let's have a look at this big guy, Soda. These are marked Akron O and are, I think they first made these in 1924. 
from earlier research. But that's your big guy soda. The 400 chocolate dairy drink. This thing is from the 1920s. And right off to the right here is a sign that I found on the internet advertising for these. Very old. About 100 years old. It said that these were uh, 5 cents to purchase. And the company, Chicago, Illinois, based off of my research. An Atlas Strong Shoulder Mason. This was in fantastic condition. Uh, these were made between 1910 and 1950. This one looks on the older side. A lot of waviness in the glass. There's imperfections that are uh, like molded into the glass. All kinds of bubbles. Those aren't chips, those are bubbles in the uh, where the threads are for the lid. The mold seam goes all the way to the top. So this definitely after 1900, and like I said, 1910 is when they started branding these. So, pretty good jar here. Nothing too special about that table vinegar. That could be 20s, but that might be uh, 1930s. What else? A little bit of pottery here. Not sure of the era. I tried to use Google to find out what this was. Was unable. If you know, let me know. Always good to find marbles. And we'll induct those into the marble jar. Little creepy hand. And these are off of things called frozen charlottes. Or this was a doll. A porcelain doll. You typically find these things in the river. Here's a couple more examples of little bits and pieces. Kind of creepy. This little fragment has all the hallmarks of it used to be a teacup. There's where the handle would have been. Little blue trees. This here, an eraser car. I used to make these things in the 1980s when I was in elementary school. This eraser looks very old. Somebody drove axles through it. And there were four wheels on this. So definitely a, a vehicle that was made by some child in school a long time ago. Texture, ground, or carved into this. Or who knows what this was made out of. I'm guessing an eraser. But kids, they typically do the same things no matter what era they're from. And that was interesting to find. A little homemade toy car. Uh, what else do we have? This is a Schaefer's Script inkwell. And this one here, not from the 20s. Uh, this is from, I think, 1952. Uh, the company, I believe, was made or established in 1913. But embossed on here... It says, uh, what is this, side draw, fill pocket. So what would happen is, and I thought there was a shard of glass stuck in here, like from another broken bottle, but no, that's by design. I didn't film recovering this because I, I just thought it was a little unique the way it was shaped, but uh, nothing special. It just looked like a slick to me. But no, uh, you would... If you had about half your ink remaining, you would put the lid on here, turn it upside down, and then go like this. And in that little glass pocket, you would have ink. So you wouldn't have to dip your fountain pen all the way into the bottom of this thing. Very interesting design. Uh, first time that I've ever saw one of those. Uh, what else? Here's this. The other part of that horn... I thought it was a trump part of a trombone when I found the other part, and I'll be showing you guys that in a, a, a inset picture. But what I think this is, being next to the train tracks, this is likely to be an a antique train horn. So, all the pictures that I saw online, train horns, they kind of had this little area here, if it'll focus where it's kind of crimped in. And this is where it would have attached to a box where it would have generated the uh, airflow to push through here. So, 
we finally solved that mystery. That's what that is. Uh, so then we take the marbles. There's the jar, another Atlas strong shoulder of a, a newer variety. And it looks like I'm going to have to get a new jar pretty soon. And you find such a variety of marbles in the Cuyahoga River. This one right here, that's uranium. has a 3% uranium in it, so whenever you put a black light up to it, it glows like you wouldn't believe. Uh, all eras you find clay marbles, Bennington's. I think Bennington's were made in the 1600s. This one, or maybe it was the 1860s. They're pretty old, and these are clay handmade German marbles. I think they were used for ballast and ships and uh, also for uh, play. But they have this hallmark little eyeball that you can't see. It's on the other side where when they're baking them, you know, they were touching together. So... But anyway, a lot of marbles in the Cuyahoga River. Always fun to find. That's about it. So, hope you enjoyed the hunt. And until next time, happy hunting, everybody.